In this video, we'll look at some useful things that we can do with string variables in Dart, or with even string literals in Dart. So in this case, I have declared two variables. So I've got string car info, and this car info variable contains Honda Bala 2006 model, model automatic. I've got another string variable that is declared as message, or the name for the variable is message. It can only hold a string, and it says, hi, my friend, you are the bomb. You aced that test. Well done. So let's look at some useful operations that we can do on these strings. So the first one I want to show you is the uppercase and lowercase methods. So let's say that I want to have everything in this string uppercase. So if I print out car info, let's just print it out like that. And if I run it, you will see that it prints out Honda Ballard 2006 model automatic. Now, I can go to that string there, that car info, and I can put the dot there behind it. And then I will get some methods that I can run. So in this case, I want to go to the two methods. So there's a two lowercase, a two uppercase, and two string. Because it's already a string, a two string won't really be helpful here. So let's look at the two lowercase and the two uppercase methods. So I'm going to use the two uppercase first. And uh, if you haven't noticed that yet, if you click on or pl place your cursor on a specific method, you will see that it gives you some information about the method in the documentation section. So you can see that it converts all characters in this string to uppercase. And if the string is already an uppercase, this method returns just the same string that you actually passed in, what they refer to as this. So let's print out this again or run it again and see what it prints out to the console. And there you can see that everything has now been converted to uppercase. Just note that, for instance, uh, the comma there, the 2006, stays the same. Obviously, you cannot have an uppercase and a lowercase comma, and you cannot have an uppercase or an uppercase two, uh, uppercase or lowercase two. So uh, that doesn't make sense. So it converts only letters to uppercase. And exactly the same thing, I can use the two lowercase method as well. And that will convert my whole string to a lowercase and then print it out. So you can see there everything is lowercase. So now the interesting thing here is that I can actually use these methods on any string, whether it's a literal or a variable. So I can even go here and say to uppercase. And you can see it will convert that literal for me to an uppercase. And when I print it out, it will already be an uppercase. So the weird thing of Dart is that every single thing, whether it's a variable or a literal, is basically an object, which means that on anything you can use the dot and it should give you some methods that you can apply. So any variable or any literal, you can actually go and use the dot. So this means I can even go and use an integer 10, which is a literal there, and I can place the dot there and there's some methods I can use on it. I can, uh, well, we'll look at some of these methods. I can, I can apply some of these methods. I can round it or whatever I want to do with it. I can even have a 10.5 and then put a dot, which will be a double value, and then try and add some methods to it. I can even use the true variable, which or the true um, literal, which is a Boolean, and I can convert it to a string, for example. So just note that part also, that you can use it on literals as well as on variables. So the two uppercase and the two lowercase methods then, very important in some cases you can use them, let's say, um, let's just make this one two uppercase again. So you can use them inside of your applications later on. If you want to convert something to an uppercase, for example, if you want to compare two strings, it's always better to have them at the same case when you're comparing to know if they are the same. Now let's look at another useful method that we can use. So I'm going to have a print statement here. And let's print a few stars there to just say that this uh, this, is, well, this will be the next section. Okay, so we're going to have the message. Hi, my friend, you are the bomb. You ace that test. Well done. And you can see I've declared this as a message. So this could be the case in, let's say, a chat of a game, maybe where you need to chat with other players and you want to check in your application uh, for swear words and you want to remove them. So what we can do then 
is to use the following method to check if there's any swear words inside of a passage or in a variable that you saved some text. So I'm going to use this message variable and I'm going to use the contains method. So we're going to say there print message dot contains and let's say the swear word is bomb there that we want to check for. So I'm going to use bomb in there and if I run this it will look through this text and see if it finds a word with this exact characters following each other and you can see it finds bomb there and it prints out true for us which means that word do exist. So the contains method is a useful method to find certain words in a passage or in a piece of text in your applications. So let's look at another method that is a bit similar to this and what we can do is to go to message again and we can call replace all and then you can see it also accepts two values there. It accepts from or the, the thing that you need to search for and the thing you want to replace it with. Which means that I can, for example, replace bomb with a few stars. So I'm going to say search for the word bomb wherever you find it. Then use a comma there. Replace it with one, two, three, four, five stars. So we know that is a swear word. So if I run this again, you will see it prints out, still true, hi my friend, you are the bomb. So instead of printing out the swear word there, we can print out a lot of stars. All right, so two useful methods here, contains and replace all, and we also looked at two uppercase and two lowercase. So I just want you to go and have a look at all the different methods that you can get by just using the dot there, you can see there's length. For example, if I print out length there, it will, it will give me the number of characters in the string. So you can count every single character, including the dot and including the space and the exclamation marks. Uh, you'll get to 61 characters. Now let's go and have a look at something else, for example. Um, I'm not going to go through everything, but there's compared to which we'll look at later on contains that we just did ends with index of, last index of, there's replace the first uh, there's split, there's substrings, there's two lowercase, two uppercase. Uh, a nice one also is trim, for example, if you have some space in the beginning and at the end, uh, let's say you've got a, uh, a user text field where somebody types his name and you don't want that name to start with open space at the beginning and the end. So instead of doing that, let's just run this one quickly and you can see that for this, there's some space in the beginning and it printed it out there with uh, the replace all one. But when we print it out with the trim method, that white space at the beginning has been removed. So this is also a very nice method that you can have a look at to trim some empty space in text. So make sure that you go through some of these methods uh, by just using the message dot and then look at what they do and uh, play around with them a bit. Thank you for watching this video. See you in the next one.